Hello, welcome to another Pastor Spotter. I'm Pastor Rick Mannon. Glad that you have joined us today. It's my desire to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we endeavor to do that by speaking the truth in love. We are presently going through the book of Revelation, and uh, we are up to chapter 14 today. And uh, so I want to talk to you about the eternal gospel and eternal punishment. Before I do that, let me read our passage today. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 13. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach (coughs) unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath <coughs> excuse me, wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So what we have here today is a very, very sobering passage. This chapter is a preview of coming attractions. There are seven of these in this chapter. We looked at the first one of those last week. The first great awakening in the United States took place between 1740 and 1742. The fire at that time was falling everywhere in the northeastern part of our country. Jonathan Edwards was greatly used as a human instrument by God in the great awakening. He's known for his sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. He preached that sermon in his own north a Hampton Church, Northampton, Massachusetts, and the, it was at the height of the Great Awakening in July of 1741, he decided to preach that same sermon again at a church in Connecticut, and it had an incredible effect. He just read his sermons, but that sermon brought people face to face with the reality of eternity. Eternity saturated Edward's thought life. He constantly led people to heaven or hell or the judgment seat of Christ. People who listened to him either lost their fear of death or shuddered at the thought of damnation. His prayer for himself was, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyeballs. In other words, he wanted to see life with an eternal perspective. And as we look back on his life, we could say that God answered that prayer. Well, this passage should stamp eternity on our eyeballs to give us an eternal perspective on this life that we live. It is easy to get bogged down with all the things of this life and lose that perspective. The passage before us is about eternal decisions. This passage teaches us a very simple yet sobering truth. The only thing that can deliver us from an eternal hell into an eternal heaven is the eternal gospel. The declaration of the gospel, the destruction of Babylon, the doom of hell, and the delight of heaven is an easy outline for this this section. Those last two are quite a contrast. But we begin in verse 6 with the declaration of the gospel. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the eternal gospel, to preach to those who dwell on the earth, (coughs) to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. So John shifts to a new scene in his panoramic vision. He sees an angel that flies directly overhead, so that all people everywhere can hear him. 
The gospel is eternal in that it has eternal consequences. And it is a gospel because it's good news. This is God's final act of mercy during the tribulation period. This will be the final opportunity for people to repent. This is the last call. What a picture this is of the mercy and the grace of God. This is good news here, the eternal gospel. It's the only time the word gospel actually appears in the book of Revelation. This is the eternal gospel, or in other words, it is eternal in nature. It's always true. It's called this as well because it has eternal significance. The destiny of people hangs in the balance. It is eternal in nature, but universal in scope. It is true for everyone, for every nation and tongue and tribe and people. Notice the content of this eternal gospel. Verse 7, he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the (coughs) hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Worship God as judge. Worship God as creator. The final appeal, appeal for salvation goes all the way back to creation. In many ways, Genesis 1-1 is the most important verse in the Bible. If you don't recognize God as the creator, if you get off there, you wander into spiritual no man's land. God is the creator. And because he is the creator, he's the judge. The one who made everything has the right to judge his creation. If there is no creator, we suffer from cosmic homelessness. If there is no God, there is no home. We are here by accident. What a way to view life. But not only that, it's not true. The words fear God and give glory are code words in the book of Revelation for conversion. You notice verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. Faith in Jesus is not denied, but implied in fearing God and giving Him glory. Well, that's all we're going to look at today. We'll continue next time uh, as we look to more in this chapter. God bless you. Thanks for watching.